Hey guys, it is November 22nd, 2017. David Cassidy of the Partridge family died. 67 years old. Died. You know, David Cassidy, I'm going to admit something to you. I, when I was a kid, and I was younger than 10 years old. I don't know how old I was. But I loved David Cassidy, and I sent away to hold his hand for, I don't know, a day or an hour or something. Uh, some bizarre uh, contest in one of those teen magazines I sent away to hold his hand. Yeah, these stars really have an awful lot of influence on children, don't they? Unfortunately, many don't get over it. They just continue in their adulthood being so wowed by famous people. But he died. Dementia. Dementia, 67. Wow. He did die surrounded by those he loved with joy in his heart and free from the pain that had gripped him for so long. He had been hospitalized for several days with organ failure. He announced his diagnosis with dementia in early, early this year. He had performed at the B.B. King Blues Club and Grill in New York in March, talking about his dementia and said his arthritis made playing guitar an ordeal. Dementia. Early onset dementia is becoming quite prevalent. Here, 2017 Alzheimer's disease facts and figures. Let's just watch this video for a few minutes. It's short. Boy, what has happened? What has happened that so many people now have Alzheimer's or, well, Alzheimer's really can't be diagnosed until uh, the person's dead, post-mortem, but dementia. Why is it an epidemic? Why do we have exponentially an increase with people with dementia. This uh, is young onset dementia in the UK. 42,325 people in the UK have been diagnosed with young onset dementia. They represent around 5% of the eight, 850,000 people with dementia in the UK. Scotland Scotland is really uh, finding itself with this epidemic that is hurting the economy and no doubt hurting an awful lot of individual families having to care for people with dementia. 
It's an epidemic in Scotland. The report highlights the large and rapidly growing numbers of people with dementia in Scotland and the economic impact now and in the future. It provides detailed figures on numbers of people with dementia and on services, both nationally and by local authority and health boards. The report sets out what strategies need to be put in place to manage or reduce the increase. As our population ages, there is projected to be a 75% increase in the number of people with dementia. What is going on? Australia, are you prepared for your dementia epidemic? But this was years ago. You already have your epidemic. Alzheimer's at age 30, an old person's disease, young family. This man got dementia. First thing I noticed in my husband were some personality changes. They have children, eight, four, three years of age. Dementia, a newlywed ski instructor diagnosed with dementia. Right after she got married, she was diagnosed with dementia. In youngest case doctors have seen I'm sorry, that is not the youngest case doctors have seen because Alzheimer's is not just a disease of the old age, but young onset. Alzheimer's affects people younger than age 65. Up to 5% of the more than 5 million Americans with Alzheimer's have younger onset, younger onset, which means that people not just in their 40s and 50s are being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. How about 12 years old? How about 12 years old? How about, how about 13 years old? Yes, these are two different girls diagnosed with dementia. So, um, is it, I'm sure this does not come as any surprise to all of you, considering that we now all live, whether it is in the United States or Scotland, Ireland, uh, anywhere in the UK, Spain, Italy, uh, any of the NATO countries for sure, Australia, that we are seeing dementia, Alzheimer's, exponentially increase due to our thoroughly toxic environments that we are now living in 24-7. Microwave frequencies overloaded with them. Cell phones, iPads, smartphones, smart meters, Wi-Fi. In schools, public schools, and children being diagnosed, that is actually increasing more children being diagnosed early onset dementia. But these microwave frequencies affect our brains and cause us to not be able to sleep properly, which that in itself, just alone, insomnia, not being able to have that deep sleep, oh, that the microwave frequencies actually uh, deprive us of, the microwave frequencies affect the melatonin in your brain. That's why melatonin now, everybody's buying it to try to get that deep sleep, try to get sleep. But the microwave frequencies, I have done the research, I've posted the videos, these microwave frequencies deprive us of REM, that REM stage that rapid eye movement stage where we are in a deep sleep and it is that stage that allows us to wake up feeling well rested. So that alone, if everything else was just, you know, fine and no toxins were coming out of our faucets, toxins in the water, toxins in the air, toxins in our food, if none of that manifested and we just had one problem with sleep that could cause so many medical issues 
and affect our brains. So, it's not just the microwave frequencies. But this, um, this refusal of doctors to look at the causes and so many ordinary Americans refusing to do the research to find out how toxic our environments have become. We will only see more and more and more people coming down with dementia. But what we have on these sites, medicinenet.com, yes, many risk factors for early dementia can show up in teens. Can show up in teens. Well, what are the risk factors? Alcohol intoxication, stroke, use of antipsychotic drugs, depression, drug abuse, a father with dementia. Yeah, genetic, right. Um, if it was genetic, then we would still be seeing, or years ago we would have seen a high rate of dementia. But uh, Poor mental function as a teen, being short, being short and having high blood pressure were the risk factors they found. So when you see these kinds of things on these sites, it is, it just, it's mind blowing. The idiocy, the idiocy really is so profound now. And because it's medicine, uh, medicine, medicine, medicinenet.com, people will go to this and believe it. They just believe it. They don't question short, short, how many, you know, baby boomers did drugs um, in their early years, and they weren't, you know, they're fine today. Um, depression causes dementia. Genetics, poor mental function as a teen, what the hell does that mean? How many teens now are sitting in these classrooms with Wi-Fi routers right over their heads? They're all looking at computer screens. They're all forced to do, you know, their work on these iPads, iPods, or whatever the hell they are. All getting hit with these dangerous, dangerous frequencies. But when they then come out of school, what then do they breathe in? A whole lot of aluminum. I will link to all of these sites, um, but I'm going to play seven minutes of this 27-minute video with Dr. Russell Blaylock, a uh, neurosurgeon. Yes, this may be one of the main causes of the exponential increase in dementia, Alzheimer's diagnoses. And with a population in all of our countries surrounded by so many people who have been so dumbed down and have not matured enough to deal with the serious issues that we are all dealing with, with a population that loves, loves their willful ignorance, they even now get hostile defending their own dumbed down brains, um, more and more of us will be diagnosed because there's no way to combat any of the threats that we are now facing when we have so many who are just unbelievably sick, psychically, mentally, physically, but refusing to attend to the toxic environment that now is so in our face, it is, it is staggering beyond comprehension. How do you deal with a world that is so obviously insane and you have most of the people in all of our respective countries denying, denying the obvious. Dr. Blaylock, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. There's something I wanted to talk about, and that is about chemtrails or ge geoengineering. And I know that they are spraying aluminum uh, in the atmosphere uh, to what they say is to uh, combat global warming. 
can you talk a little bit about this aluminum that is being sprayed and what that is doing to our brains? What we were concerned about was the nano aluminum that is making the particles so small uh, that it's rapidly absorbed through the skin, through the mucous membranes and lungs. Uh, but also a particular thing of interest, man, was the fact that when you breathe air that contains nano aluminum, uh, it's rapidly absorbed through the, the mucosa, the lining of the nose, and enters the olfactory nerves, which are the smell nerves. And these olfactory nerves carry this nano aluminum directly to the part of the brain that's first affected in Alzheimer's disease and most severely affected in Alzheimer's disease. And that's the entorhinal cortex and the hippocampus. Uh, when you look at Alzheimer's patients and measure aluminum levels, you see the highest level at that entry point from the olfactory nerve uh, into the entorhinal cortex. So uh, we have good evidence that aluminum is entering the nose uh, and entering the part of the brain that's affected uh, in Alzheimer's, causing abnormalities in memory and learning and uh, attention and concentration. Um, when you do this experimentally, you can trace this with a radioactive tracer and watch the uh, nano aluminum pass along that nerve into the brain, and then it's distributed throughout the brain. Uh, you keep doing that day after day, the levels get pretty high. Now, my concern with the, the geoengineering was the word I got, and when I started looking it up, and one of the conferences in which their speaker was talking about it, they talked about using nano aluminum, and the reason they were using it, they say, well, it stays suspended in the atmosphere longer because the particles are so small and it acts like a cloud to reflect the heat supposedly back out into outer space. Uh, well, the problem is it slowly uh, descends down uh, to the earth enters the lakes and streams, plants take it up. So then the aluminum content of the plants we eat is much higher. The water we drink is much higher. Uh, and we breathe it. Um, the filters in house filtering systems not small enough to filter it out. So gradually nano aluminum content inside your house elevates. Uh, and what we know is that nano aluminum is infinitely more inflammatory than normal size aluminum. So it's more toxic to the brain uh, once it gets in. And it can penetrate all parts of the cell. It easily passes through the membranes and blood-brain barrier, et cetera. Uh, so knowing uh, all of this, uh, I was just astounded that they were spraying uh, hundreds and thousands of tons of nanoaluminum all over the world, uh, particularly in the United States. And I you know, did a little research and looked and in my own case, in my skies, and, and I see these tight patterns, and it's obvious a pattern, it's not contrail. Uh, the whole thing, contrail, is nonsense. You watch a plane fly, and it turns on this cloud and uh, of material coming out of the back of it, and it stops, and there's a break, and then it starts back up. Well, I knew the jet's not cutting his engine off. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, you have a, a seven, 47 or 767 or something, we know it's not turning its engine on and off, and we know that it's not flying in a checkered pattern. Uh, then pretty soon, for instance, we've noticed lately, there's been none of the chemtrails, or very few of them. Well, did the flight stop over the United States for the last month? Well, no. <laughs> it yeah. usually has about the same number of flights uh, every day, every week, every month. So those chemtrails should be the same, but they don't. They vary considerably. You'll see periods in which there's very dense uh, uh, trails, uh, chemtrails in the sky, and periods where there's hardly any, but there's just as many flights. And, and there, but, but there's many skeptics out there that will say, you know, I mean, uh, for me, when I start talking about geoengineering, I just kind of watch people's eyes glaze over and they're going right. And um, you know, I think that's very much by design. Yeah, there's there's a lot of people out there that it's their job to debunk this information. Well, one of the greatest successes they had is to uh, create the idea that anything that smacks of a conspiracy theory is a loony. Right. Uh, which gives great cover for people who are conspiring things. Now, there's thousands of studies on the toxicity of aluminum. You don't need to do studies. 
Uh, so this is from people who are actually in governmental uh, conferences on geoengineering. That takes it out of the conspiracy realm. This is out of the horse's mouth. Uh, we know that uh, the conferences on uh, uh, global warming all include talks and, and discussions of geoengineering. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's like a detective story. You put the you put all the data together that's hard facts and, and their own facts. It, it pretty soon it becomes undeniable. And you ask the people who refuse you and roll their eyes, well, how do you explain it? Right. Well, I don't know. You know well, don't you think it, it, it behooved you to find out? Yeah. Well, I've had people you know? on the show like um, Rosalind Peterson and Dane Wigington, and uh, their evidence is indisputable. And Dane Wigington challenges anyone. Actually, he, he wanted me to do a show if I could find someone that would, yeah. would challenge him. And I haven't been able to find anybody. Well, they can't because if you look at uh, some of the things that's been done, for instance, Bob has gone into some of these areas with an extensive spraying, and they measured the aluminum level before the spraying started in the, the, lo the local lakes and streams and snow, and uh, found out that after the spraying, the levels of aluminum went up astronomically, 2,000-fold increases. Uh, when they measured in the plants and trees, massive increases in the aluminum. So your question to the, 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 the eye roller is, well, where do you think this aluminum came from? Uh, I don't know. Well, it's time to find out. You can't just roll your eyes and, and scoff. Uh, if you can't explain how a lake within uh, a year or a month can increase its aluminum level to that degree, now I think somebody needs to start paying attention. We're already seeing a dramatic increase in degenerative brain disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Uh, I predict if they're really doing this, if, they, if they're spraying the atmosphere with nano aluminum all the time, there's going to be a dramatic increase in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, mm -hmm. uh, well, as well as a number of neurologic disorders. Well, what? But we are now living that. We are now living that. So this was in 2015. Uh, yes, they are doing it. I was sad to hear. It was sad to hear that Russell Blaylock is questioning whether or not they're doing it. He knows that they are doing it. This is not the first interview that he has um, uh, given. He has stated that they are doing it, and it's clear. Look at that plane. I mean, that is not just, you know, the, the exhaust coming from the plane. It's not a contrail. Clearly, some substance is being discharged from that plane many different areas of the plane and it looks not like a contrast so we are going to be seeing more and more people come down with dementia being diagnosed with dementia and that is going to cause an awful lot more more people in our respective countries who are going to be facing the economic hit their own individual financial problems um, and having to care for someone in their family who is unfortunately diagnosed with dementia and we've heard I'm sure all of us have heard I have the stories of what it is like to care for somebody with dementia it is so unbelievably difficult causes an awful lot of tension within the family and um, creates creates a real burden on families. This is coming from an external factor. This is a deliberate causing of dementia in all of certainly Western nations. I, for one, don't like it. I, for one, am really upset that everything just keeps getting worse and nothing seems to be getting better. Yeah, that's the truth.